and then and our mismatch at the interface becomes slightly larger slightly more than five percent the atom size difference is more than five percent okay in this case as i draw it here of course this is again an over exaggeration five percent here i'm probably at least 10 20 percent or larger but okay let's just say more than five percent i can still force them to match like this right perfect crystal but except that you can imagine at this green bond, uh, sorry, not the green bond, this interface. If I try to really match, the strain here would be large or small? Pretty large. So in reality, in reality, it quite often it's more favorable for the system to relax, to change from such a configuration into a interface with what? Dislocations. Okay, so in reality, instead of trying to match bond by bond perfectly, uh, well, I wouldn't say perfectly, but at least bond by bond here, in reality, quite often, they would relax to something like this. Same crystal structure for the top versus the bottom. And then, in certain region, I have decent uh, match. But occasionally, one in every, I don't know, five, ten atoms, I have what? Dislocation. By dislocation, this is what, what types of dislocation? So-called edge dislocation, or so-called half plane. Do you see that half plane? Where is that half plane? From here on the top, right? Half plane. From here on the top, that's another so-called half plane. This edge this dislocation in instead of trying to match exactly bond by bond at the interface the system quite often would choose a different configuration now incorporate what dislocation at the interface between the two faces make sense at such a interface people would call it uh, semi-coherent semi-coherent it's coherent in some location but occasionally i have a mismatch complete mismatch these type of interface people call it semi-coherent interface and if we define so-called misfit between the two phases misfit if we define that misfit as delta as this ratio what is the a numerator is the difference in the lattice parameter was the denominator oh uh, well we can use one lattice parameter for one of them or you can use the average between the two make sense either one is okay if we define this as our so-called misfit and mathematically we can relate several parameters together what does d mean capital D mean look at what I'm drawing what does capital D mean the distance between so-called neighboring dislocations capital D means the dislocation the distance between neighboring edge dislocations D alpha means lattice parameter for alpha phase let's say on top D beta means lattice parameter for the beta phase at the bottom then mathematically that's this relationship capital D over lattice parameter for one phase times the difference in lattice parameter would it be equal to the lattice parameter for beta How do we understand this equation? What does D mean? D means the total distance from one dislocation to the neighboring dislocation. Make sense? So what does capital D over DB mean, roughly mean? Or capital D over DA mean? Capital D over DA 
uh, or the alpha would roughly mean how many what bonds, right? How many bonds between neighboring dislocation? Make sense? And then what is this term? The this difference between within the bracket that's the difference between the lattice parameter. So how many of bonds times each bond I'm having this difference. You see what I mean? Within the bracket that tells you okay within one bond every one bond I'm having a gap small little gap and this guy tells me how many of this little gap add up to what? A total gap. You see what I mean? Because from here to here, what's it from here to here? In uh, net net, I'm missing how many bond? From here to here, what's it from here to here? In net net, I'm missing how many bond? Or from here to here? Missing one, right? It's just I'm missing one interatomic distance. So that's what this mathematical relation is about. The difference between Individual bond times how many bond gives me the total length for that bond. Okay? Because of this, we would have this difference divided by one lattice parameter. The difference divided by the one lattice parameter is essentially what? The data which is misfit, which means capital D we keep this ratio become our delta would be equals to d beta. Okay, you may ask uh, Dr. Chen, can I write uh, d capital D delta equals d alpha? Yes, because all you can write as as an average because the difference between the two are small. Make sense? And so all we can rewrite the capital D the distance between neighboring dislocation would be db divided by delta. Does this make sense? For a fixed two material, or for two material, what this shows is the smaller the delta means what? The larger the misfit or smaller the misfit? Smaller delta means smaller misfit, which means the two fits pretty well, the larger the capital D means what? I can have longer distance between this location. I can have larger regions where we have hmm, reasonably good fit before I need a dislocation to accommodate. Make sense? So that's kind of how you understand this relationship. And then from previous, this is what we have. Capital D for what? Distance between neighboring dislocation, okay? It's a ratio between the lattice parameter divided by data for relative misfit. Make sense? Relative misfit, okay? So if uh, now if the misfit is now too large, and uh, if we think of the Burgers vector quite often we can write Burgers vector for simple for the simple situation like this we can write the Burgers vector the displacement around a local dislocation is roughly just uh, the lattice parameter is roughly the average I'm using what what are these symbols approximate not a precise, not a precise. Burgers vector in this simple case is roughly the lattice parameter. It's also the roughly the average lattice parameter. Why? Because d alpha and d beta are pretty close or different. Pretty close, right? We said small misfit. More than 5%, but let's say still below 20%. Okay? If we can write something like this, then we would have the D. What does capital D mean? 
distance between neighbor and dislocation at the interface would roughly approximately be Burke's vector divided by misfit. It's just the same. It's just uh, we are doing approximation. And then for the mismatch in two different directions, if we have mismatch one direction, also in the other direction, we would have d1 for one direction, one direction of Burke's vector, and the Burke's vector for the other direction. Okay. So similar to the coherent case, the interfacial energy in this would come, still come from two sources. One would be chemical contribution because right at the interface you are still bonding towards the wrong types of atom. That's a chemical contribution. And then that's also the structural misfit. Okay, structural misfit. I have the dislocation occasionally. And these two together would contribute to my so-called semi-coherent interfacial energy. Make sense? semi-coherent individual energy. And uh, if we're talking about a small misfit, between 5% to 25%, small misfit, if we are talking about small misfit, the structural term, ST for structural, gamma for individual energy, but ST, we are only looking at the structural term due to the stringing, the misfit term, is proportional to what? 1 over d. What does d mean again? Dislocation between distance between dislocation. 1 over d tells us the density, right? d means the distance between dislocation. 1 over d just tells us per unit length or per unit area how many dislocations. 1 over d. So the interfacial energy depends on how what's the density of the dislocation. And because D is inversely proportional to data. The interfacial energy will be proportional to what? Data. Make sense? Because 1 over D is proportional to data. If I move D here, data over top. Okay? So what that means is for such so-called semi-coherent interface, the interfacial energy, the structural contribution is proportional to extent of misfit. The larger the misfit, the, the larger the structural contribution to the individual energy. Okay? And if the misfit is what? Too large. How large? Larger than 25%. Okay? If it's like that, what would happen? Data. What is data? We define data as d, lattice parameter, divided by, what does capital D mean? Distance between dislocation. If this is our data, is greater than what? 25%, which is 1 over 4. If it is like this, what happens to d? The d would be, if I put it, D here, D would be smaller than four times of what? Lattice parameter, which means every four atom I need a dislocation. But in reality, that's kind of like too close to put dislocation together. In that case, the material is too much misfit together. Too frequent, the dislocation are coming together too frequent to match in between and then have a dislocation. As a result, they will transform to completely incoherent. So which means when the lattice parameter, when the atom size are too different, let's say between iron and carbon, at the interface, they wouldn't try to mismatch. They would just go completely into so-called uh, incoherent interface. Make sense?